So today we are going old school. We are making mead. Tasty, tasty stuff. Uh, as you can see, this is being sterilized. Uh, I'm a sterilizing thing here. If you haven't already seen the vid, uh, pause it and go up to the top somewhere around, you know, there, and you will see uh, the link to how to sterilize stuff using the leech. And, you know, it will go into it in more detail. So, what I'm making here is sort of a medium mead. Uh, it is basically 1.5 kilos of honey. Very simple, it's about three jars. You know, these are 454, Ooh, so slightly under, but it will do for our purposes. Um, if you want a really sweet mead, add another jar. If you're using runny honey uh, instead of the set stuff, add another jar anyway. What I've been told and what I've read uh, in very, very old books that runny honey needs more, probably because it's not crystalline like this. So to get started, you're going to need to take a nice clean pan. Dun, dun, dun. And we will uh, boil some water and then put the honey in there. So, the kettle is boiled, made myself a coffee. Tasty, tasty. Mmm. Ah, the other nectar of the gods. So, um, you take your spoon, which has been sterilized. I know that uh, we're going to be heating up like normal, but we're not doing a full rolling boil, so... Uh, open up your jars. Doesn't love to do that. There we go. Oh, smells like honey. Odd that. And uh, got my nice sterilized spoon. And we're just chucking the honey out of the jar into a pan. And this just helps with mixing because trying to shake a bottle with honey like that. It's going to take a while. So in the bottom of the pan here is a large dollop of honey. Yummy. And what we want to do is just add a little bit of water. Just a smidge. And this is just to aid in the melting because honey will turn liquid rather easily. And then we're just heating it. We're not going to bring it to a rolling boil because we want to preserve as much of the tastiness inside. So. Wish me luck, so we're not adding boiling water to glass, because it can shatter. Drink some more coffee. It's got to be done. Grab a spoon. Uh, and literally pour mm, honey water on yourself. That's how you make um, yourself, you know, sexy to all the ladies. Almost perfectly clear jars, apart from the rim where you can just have a little sample of honey. Mmm, it's quite nice. So, what was I going to say? Oh, yes, honey is awesome. But when you're making mead, don't buy the cheapest of the cheap, um, like a supermarket value one. It's made with like a sugar water, and I did try it, and honestly, it came out like cough mixture. And that's not really what you want. So you can hear it's starting to heat up now. And it's changed to like this consistency. Which is melted. But we just want to bring it just up to the boil. And this is sort of like a, a cheap pasteurizing. Just to make sure that any bacteria in there is dead. Sticky hands from all the honey. And while we're doing that, got my lovely sterilized demijohn, which we'll be using shortly. Dun, 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 da, 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 da. And funny enough, a funnel. So what I'm going with is my favorite universal wine yeast. Uh, different yeast is going to give different flavors, obviously. I have seen people say that you can use bread yeast, and yes, you can. 
but it won't get over 5% and it will leave sort of a bready taste. So if you like the taste of bread in your alcohol, get it. Just probably stick with a kilo. Mm, mm, mm. That smells good. So I'm going to turn it off there, because I can. Mmm, lovely. Because it's heated up enough, it smells really nice. Funny, that hot honey, I mean, it's a disgusting smell, it's disgusting. So I drink some more coffee. Mmm. And I'm just going to rinse out my dirty jar. Clean but not bleachy. And I'm just going to add in a base of water on the bottom. This is mainly because that's hot and this is cold, so. There we go. Take my funnel, my tasty funnel. Sterilize that too. It's already been sterilized, but let's make sure. And now, for the good bit. Ba -da -da -da. Yeah, we can see. Now for the awesomely cool bit. Pouring it in. Make sure it's got a nice stir on it. Just making sure everything is... Mm. Still smells good. Mm. Don't need that spoon anymore, funny enough. And then add it in. And the idea is the cold water mixed with the just off boiling. It's enough to get rid of all the bacteria in it. Should make warm water, which is nowhere near the uh, smashing point of the glass. Beard. Get a bit of water and swirl it round the pan. Cool noise, and it goes. Cheats day out, right? Might as well just use a bit more water to top it up. More than I need, probably. And it washes out the funnel and just makes sure we got all of the tasty sugary goodness. Ah, why not fill it up to the line? up to the line. Since we know that even though this is going to bubble a lot because the honey has not really got bits in it it's not going to flow over the top so if you use like an orange juice to make a Wurzel's orange wine which I'll make in another video which goes everywhere this on the other hand will not so ah, now we grab it and shake it clean hands as well which mine are Dirty hands would obviously end up with transferring stuff into the liquid. We don't want that. So basically, don't scratch your ass and then touch your wine. Now it looks fairly well mixed. I'm just going to give it another little shaky. Gets a bit of air in there. Since heating water up removes air. And we need a little bit of oxygen in our water to help the yeast. Mmm, tasty. Don't need that anymore. Just keep licking my hands. Grab your hydrometer. Or just watch the vid and use the same honey. You end up with the same thing. And now we pop it in and see what it will come out as. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's warm, so it's saying here. Ooh, it's bubbling right around. Taking into account a little bit of foam. Uh, Thirteen and a half percent. That's pretty hardcore. Yeah. 
You've got to remember though, is that not all the sugars in here are fermentable. So it probably won't be as strong as it says. This is why we're going for an in-between. It's not dry, it's not stupidly sweet. So hopefully this will come out. I'm hoping. Mm. Don't need that anymore. Oh, that's disgustingly awful. <laughs> it's just me. This is the video of me licking things. It's awesome. Not the stuff that's going in here. So this is warm but not hot. That's why we could add it all in. And basically we just get a little bit of uh, your universal wine yeast or whatever yeast you want to use. I want a bit of throat hit. That's what the wine yeast does. It gives you a bit of a <laughs> when you drink it. I like to know I'm drinking alcohol, but you can use a cider yeast. Uh, you just need to add in nutrients and things like that. And um, it'll give you a more mellow, sort of flavorful thing. It's just up to you, really. But I like the throat hit. So then we pitch our yeast, as in chuck some in. And since this is a little foamy, I'm gonna give it a shake just to mix this around. Obviously you can make I know, a starter by adding a bit of water and then put the yeast in to activate but that involves forethought and planning. Get in there you yeasty bastards. And that is now the yeast mixed in. I'm not gonna lick my hands. I don't need extra vitamins since uh, Yeast is just marmite. Who knew? So we've now got our sterilized airlock. Since everything that's going into contact with it needs to have a fighting chance of making sure the wine doesn't go off. So the best way to do it is put some water in it, about halfway. Stick the cork on before you put the top on. Yeah. You see, this is actual damage on. It's from the 60s. That's why this cork is quite tight fit in there. They were narrower at the time. Stick that on. I close it over because it is going to bounce off anyway. You can see it doesn't quite go over the top. That's what you need. And then all we need to do is label the thing. Basically, we're just going to leave this to do its thing, and it's going to be awesome. 